Hello and welcome to my fourth video about CanOpen. In the last video I was talking about object dictionary and I recommend you to watch it before watching this video. Now let's look at the process data objects. This service is used to transfer pure technical data. They could be accessed only in an empty operational state. In the object dictionary, the objects with PDO mapping attribute set are PDO objects that are transferred upon request to send PDO data. The requests could be generated by a device itself. For this purpose, there is an event timer property which dedicates frequency of the requests or it could be generated by a synth signal. For this purpose, there is a change of state flag specified for each object. It is better to use a change of state flag because it doesn't exploit the bus so much. One PDO object has a maximal length of 8 bytes. Next feature of PDO service is availability of an inhibit timer. This specifies a time interval that is reserved for a device not to communicate. This makes possible for low priority messages to win the arbitration and not to be disturbed by higher priority messages. Device could define as much as 512 PDOs with different CAN IDs. PDOs have CAN IDs from 181 to 507F hexa. Now let's move to what is absolutely basic to understand for proper PDO configuration. An object in the object dictionary could belong either to receive PDO or transmit PDO, determining if the object is intended for data read or data write. For example, for a position encoder sensor, its transmit PDO will carry data about relative angle of its shaft. The receive PDO resides at indexes starting from 1400 hexa and the features of the video resides at indexes of 1600 hexa. Let's call index 1400 hexa a configuration field because it contains a configuration of PDO. For example, COP ID used by the PDO. Let's call index 1600 hexa a data field because it contains a pointer to an object to receive in the object dictionary. From my previous video, you know the data type record is a structure. What does it mean? If you want to configure receive PDO object, for example to read an angle from position encoder, let's say, it will be your first PDO, so PDO 0. You have to set two entries in the object dictionary. First entry has index 1400 hexa with 0 at the end, indicating that your PDO number is 0. And next entry has index 1600 hexa with also 0 at the end. The same applies for transmit PDO, but in comparison, the indices starting from 1800 hexa and 1800 hexa respectively. Essentially, if your node has a setting for a DPO, there must be another node with TPDO set, as will be shown in the next example. Now let's look at some simple practical case. One node is a temperature sensor that sends temperature data via TPDO. The data is stored at index 2110 hexa, which is a record containing more variables. In this example, there will be two nodes shown communicating to each other. Our first device has node ID 1 and the next device has node ID 4, which is a temperature sensor. A PDO of node 1 has number 2, so it's PDO 2. So the index of configuration will be 1402 hexa and will also declare COP ID 201. Since a PDO of node 1 has number 2, it must define also an object at index 1602 hexa, which contains a pointer to the storage in its object dictionary. A PDO of node 4 has number 0, so the index of configuration will be 
1800 hexa and 1800 hexa respectively and we'll also declare COP ID 201. Value of TPDO data object is transmitted from node 4 to node 1. Now 1602 hexa and 1800 hexa are arrays of fields. Each field points to a storage in the object dictionary. The first member of a record or array is always the number of items it contains. In our example, we have two items in it. Our fields have values of 2110 and 6 and 8 hexa and 2110 and 7 and 8 hexa. The first four digits represent an index of an object in the object dictionary. This object, in our case, is a record tsense. Let's say it has eight fields, but we are using only two of them for video communication. We are targeting variables at position 6 and 7, which are represented by the next two digits in the field. The last two digits are for the length of a variable in bits, so it's one byte. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions related to my presentation, do not hesitate to ask and also if you enjoyed this video series, do not forget to vote.